Hey, what's up? It's Sean and Toby. We're back. We haven't been here for a long time. We're sorry. It's been like 16 days, yeah. but there's been a lot of stuff to come out, and I did a lot of things. And Toby stuff. was in jail. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why we haven't been here. That's the truth. You know me. <laughs> Old jailbird. But I kind of run things in there, so it's all right. Yeah, it's all you, know? you got connections. <laughs> you got all the food and, and pot that you needed. No problem. You know? Jelly no thing. Yeah. Um, uh huh. This isn't that kind of YouTube show. <laughs> I do watch those shows sometimes. They're you know? super entertaining. But no, I'm not keeping it real like that. <laughs> uh, Tope saw some shit. Well, we both saw some shows, I but Toby to saw a lot concerts. more than I did. Uh -huh. um, um, I, we saw... Oh, yeah, you go first. Well, uh, no, no, tell me what's going on. What'd you see? Well, got, we oh, saw... Oh, yeah, yeah. The last show that I saw was off at the North Door? No, the Old North Door. What's it called now? Uh, it's called The Parish. The Parish. I'm having a really bad memory night. So, oh, uh, anyway. But we saw off at The Parish with uh, Dice Spitz. And then, um, I can't remember the name of the band that opened either, but they were really good. Um, off killed it, of course. Uh, this is the second time that I've been to an off show where, as I was entering the club, Keith Morris was actually also entering the club from the front door in line, um, showing his wristband to the, uh, to the person at the door. I don't know why he does, I, I really wanted to ask him why he just doesn't go around back, but I think, I don't know, I think he kind of secretly loves going into the front door at shows to see everybody. And this is the kick-ass poster that Toby got from the show. Off sounded great. Dice Spitz was very impressive opening for Off. Man, I got to see them. They were fun. They really reminded me of like it was like L7. 90s grunge mania. Yeah, yeah. Again, was... even with the crowd reaction. Yeah, like over the top. Yeah, very felt like it's very early 90s. Look, everyone signed it. I don't know who's who, but I think this is Keith. It says next. Keith Morris. And Shelly then, got this for me. Yeah. Very it's nice. Super nice. I'm gonna put it up now that I've shown it off. But a very uh, psychedelic poster, all of free LSD. Um, Man, it's a great record. album. And I didn't get to stay for the whole thing, so I had to go to work, but I was glad that they opened with the front of that album, uh, you know? Yeah. So it was like the first three, I got to see like the first three or four songs. And the that. last four songs were off, they did like the whole record, and then the last four or five songs were just uh, like their oh, Classic material. off material? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, shows. And then Band of Bastards played. Oh yeah, Band of Bastards, now. that was the first band, yeah, with uh, uh, Jason. From yeah, Trail from Dead. Trail of Dead, but yeah. they're like hardcore. Super fun. hardcore. And I like the way they had the setup with the drums on the side. I hope they open for Mind Force when Mind Force comes. Oh they're man, I'm Mind. looking forward to seeing Mind Force. And then, uh, da -da -da -da, I went and saw, oh yeah, I got free tickets to see Ministry and Gary Newman. Oh, that's right. How uh -huh. was that? Well, once again, I had to leave about three or four songs in the Ministry set, but, um... They had a lot of samples with Donald Trump on them, and I realized that's the last mm -hmm. album. They they also opened with their new album, like oh, the, like they were playing the whole thing. Great, it, it seemed like, which is awesome. Yeah, their last. And I forgot great. how many Donald Trump samples are in there, but <laughs> it's like uh, his voice throws me the wrong way yeah. after all. It's so hard. anyway, uh, but 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 they were impressive. Especially now, this might be a controversial point with some people because so many of my friends enjoyed it so much. But I really felt like Gary Newman was lip syncing, mm. and uh, and it, I'll tell you what I know he has a lot of albums, and I expect him to play uh, a lot of new stuff. But I know like the, his first four albums, the two Two Way Army albums, yeah. and then uh, Pleasure Principle and whatever the next one and uh he only played one song from it and it was of course cars Ugh. and i really it was a disappointing set he was selling copies of the two-way army album which he played nothing from that was the only thing he was selling he was selling copies for 25 bucks but if it was signed it was like 50 bucks oh, you know man. that's wild yeah but but and then he had these guys in his band that were like they kind of looked like right said fred now mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah and then and just acting all skitzed out like doing weird shit like pointing to random people in the audience i don't know i, I was not feeling the gary yeah. newman set a yeah. lot of people i know were really stoked about it and maybe they know the new material better or maybe maybe <sighs> God, it really, I mean, there were times he was singing the mics like this far, like, ah, 
like you know like, yeah it seems that's too much i don't know mm, yeah i wasn't feeling the gary and i'm a big fan i love you know the the, the two-way army album is a record i've probably worn out you know i mean if he would have played anything from that album i would have been stoked right Just, and those songs are short you know anyway so bitch 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 but i because the thing is i've seen so many good bands playing live pulling off all their shit lately that like it, i don't care how good your recording is there's gonna be and is this there's some speeding up and slowing down going on on some level there's mm -hmm. gonna be a noticeable lack of energy to it right and even when ministry came on you can tell the drummers playing with a click track because the tempo never changes mm -hmm. and uh they can't because they've got so many samples in mm -hmm. there yeah you know yeah yeah it has to go right along with it but but for me there's just an element lost. An element lost. It's got, the music's got to breathe a little bit. You got to speed up and slow down. It's got to go out of pitch sometimes. Yeah, I mean, if know. I wanted to hear that, I you could hear it at home. Right? Yeah, yeah, so. but not to diss ministry because I mean, it was at least like the guitars were plugged in. You could definitely see. I mean, they did once again have like four guys playing and a lady playing like the same simple line on yeah. like. But that's that's the whole strategy. That's ministry. That's their sound. You know. Did uh, Gary Newman do uh, My Shadow in Vain? No! Or... What? Of course he didn't. No, I w if he played that, I would have been stoked. Man. Was, the only song I knew he played was Cars, right? Oh, God, dude. Uh huh. That's yeah. a big disappointment, man. I gotta say. That, that was okay. I want to thank Joseph for getting me on the show. That was awesome. And a lot of people I was hanging out with were having a good time. And I was trying not to spoil their time by yeah. pointing out that this isn't. It really doesn't seem live to me, yeah, you know? Yeah, but Did you stand there with folded arms? Yeah, like, oh, and, yeah. You know, uh -huh. like, no, uh -huh. you know? I boo. <laughs> Don't be afraid to boo. Yeah. Like, like you know what? I if want you... everyone to have fun. Yeah. You know, one time... <laughs> You know what's funny is like I sent uh, at the very same place, but when it was the back room, I got kicked out of there in like 1992 uh, in a fetus show. Remember what did fetus? you do? Yes. I was heckling fetus <laughs> and I was drunk. I had listened to someone on the way over talk about how, what a genius he was, and then I was drunk and I thought it wasn't all that. <laughs> yeah. And well, I was I'm like gonna tell him that he's him not off. fucking god. Because I was fucking dead drunk and 22 years old, and I got kicked Get out, him out of 21. Here. Anyway, I, I I sent him an apology, Jim Thurwell, yeah. fetus. I was like, sorry, I flipped you off that whole show before they kicked me out. I was drunk. What did he say? He never got back. To oh, me. he didn't. He must get those every day. Oh. Yeah. I was hoping you guys were having dinner on a weekly. No, ever not. since you know, like mm. patched it up. My friend Hank knows him, and mm. he was like, "Oh yeah, he think that was funny," you know. Yeah, you think he doesn't remember, but he thinks about that every well, day. Well, I always think about That's that. Show. I played shows where everyone's rocking out, and there's like one guy over here doing like just like just yawning, looking at you, doing like this. Yeah. God, yeah, it's a, it's only the negative that we see, right? Yeah, hurry it up, come on. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is the Scott has to end. <laughs> <laughs> he makes sure to have eye contact with you too. <laughs> and then you can't see anything else. You'll be panning across the whole audience. I was like, yeah, yeah. It's Aaron Fox. You're talking to Aaron Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I talk with Bones about this. He has the same problem. It, look. look. Lord can only pick Christ. out the people that are not having a good time. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then they're just, it's daggers after that, right? You know? <laughs> All right. Oh, and then I saw, uh, da -da -da -da, I was complaining the last show that I never got to see Horror Babylon. And then James from Horror Babylon uh, texted us. He's like, come on out to the show on Cinco de Mayo. And they were awesome. I didn't. Those guys were giving me the horns, so they'd seen they'd seen the show. And then I picked up their first two albums, and so they were great, uh, very entertaining. And uh, uh, James, real good on stage, really awesome, uh, fast ass riffs uh, on the guitars. And then they played with a band called Flesh Crawl, and who was good. A little more new school. They had a lot of head banging and then the swivel. Mm -hmm. And then, but it was the first time I've ever seen this where their drummer 
had no kick drums. He had what? two. He was just playing directed triggers. Wow. Uh -huh. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Uh huh. I mean, I was like, that's a super trigger Pantera kick sound. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but like, it, it, they're not even faking it anymore. Right. I mean, if you're not actually using those drums, Why I fake mean, they it? take up a lot of room. Yeah, in yeah, for you sure. Know. No, there's a benefit to using electronic drums. It looks the weird. Older you get. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just looked like two pedals, you right, know, right. with the maybe that, you yeah. know, like what I have. Anyway. So um, they were good, and then um, I went and saw Possessed, and it was the opening night of their tour, and uh, God, what was the first band called? Martyred? They were awesome. Local, I, oh man, I, I'm going to plug their thing, because I got a CD from them that somewhere, they Martyred, they were really, really good local band. And then this band, The Black Mariah, and we're going to talk about this. They were like a western theme death metal band. Where like are they I from? Got, they're from Dallas. Oh, man. And I really liked them. Wow, there's a yeah. lot of death metal going on up in Dallas. Yeah, they things. had a song called Blessed by Buzzards. Hmm. Yeah, man, it, they, they really had their own thing going on. But we'll, more on that later. But, uh, and then, um, you, you, you need a... Anyway, what, what you did... Uada? You Uada? Yeah, you Uada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You need a. <laughs> you ought to. You need a. You oughta. You shoulda. <laughs> you shoulda. You coulda. <laughs> they were awesome. They put on a good show. I'm trying to, but they didn't have. I had to leave to go to work. So, so it was like the first night of that tour, and everything was taking a long time. A lot of and, sound checking. Because usually at those package tours, they come and take it with, I, I got to leave at a certain time. And I usually get to see about 30 minutes of the headliner. It's always a bummer, man, when, uh, I don't know, I just love for the band to just come out and play, you know? Yeah. And not stand there for fucking 10 minutes and tune, or talk to the sound guy, or do checks. Like, that should have all been taken care of before. This band's awesome. Black Mariah. Anyway, all the bands were good. Yeah, you oughta. Anyway, and uh, so we're going to get to it. Oh, yeah, I, I also wanted to say that uh, I've been keeping up with this series, more Boss Black Rockers, and it doesn't disappoint. Like, you know, I'll go a while and not listen to it, and a few more. They keep putting them out. We'll get there, and then I, I, they sit there for a bit because I'm listening to so much music, and I'm... But then when I do get to it, the, it's amazing. Yeah. Is it so? Are the artists on these? Are they all different every time, or, or yeah, is it like yeah. there's some that are the totally. same? Totally, it's all yeah. They switch it up, and occasionally, I mean, there'll be things you know they're familiar of uh, like Little Richard or you know uh, someone on there. But but uh, you know things that are more familiar, but not a whole lot. And then it'll be like different versions, and it's really really great collection. And each time I listen to it, I like I need to go backwards and retroactively buy the ones I missed before right. I got hip. To well, he's it. got like twelve. There's so many. Yeah, there the was, I, there's at least ten I need to buy because <clears throat> right. I've been keeping up with it. Yeah. No, I borrowed a few from you, and they're a lot of fun. Yeah, they're really good. Great sax playing, great sax solos. I wish like people would bring that back to like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We can, it's not too late. I bet you David can play sax. Another yeah, good talent. He can do everything. Bust out the sax. Or oh, hey, newsflash, Yardwork's looking for a sax player now. So, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me when it's gonna happen. It's happening. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. Is that everything? Was I gonna talk about anything else? Uh, no, no. I think that's it. There's okay. shows coming up. Should we talk about that or do that after? What's the show? You, yeah? What's coming up? Well, next week is Conan and Eagle Claw and Eagle Claw is good. Thraw yeah. at Come and Take It on the twenty uh, second, which oh, is yeah. next Wednesday, mm. and then we also have uh, no. Sorry, that's May seventeenth at the Lost Wall. And then obituary immolation May twenty second. Yeah, Mohawk. yeah. There's yeah. like next week. There's like three big shows I want to see. King's there's X on Thursday May twenty fifth. Boy, come and take it. Take it. And then and next like, Squale Grind. Squale Grind on the thirty first, and then Gory's on the twenty sixth. Yeah, there's so much coming up in the rest of this month, and I hope to make it to about you know 
as much as possible. Yeah. Half, half is my goal. <laughs> yeah. Three quarters is my goal, you know. Okay, anyway. So, um, and that brings us to depraved murder. Unethical terrestrial collapse. <laughs> what the fuck? These guys are from East Java, Indonesia. Uh, and I'm so mad I actually misplaced the CD and I'm going through every case trying to find it. But it's so good. I've been listening to it. Uh, here, here's the deal. It's Grindcore from Indonesia. And I can't believe how much stuff is coming. Well, they've got battle beats and yeah. there's other stuff from it. What else do we know from Indonesia? Uh, uh, worm. Uh, oh God! Yeah, those guys. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, um, but uh, this is their third album. These guys have been around since 2011. It's just two people: uh, Augie on guitars and vocals, and then Rama Muyalana on drums. So these guys yeah. do it all. These two guys do the whole record, but yeah, this is are. relentlessly brutal. It is brutal, and if you're down with the grindcore, keeping up with all of that, then. You kind of either know about depraved murder or you owe it to yourself. Check it out. And of course, I think what caught my eye was this sick ass artwork, you know, but yeah, it is brutal. Yeah. It's, and if I, I don't find my CD, I'm going to have to get another one. Uh, they're on Comatose Music. And oh, yeah. The, Comatose has a YouTube channel. These guys don't have any videos, but they, their YouTube channel has the whole record on there. So yeah. If you don't find your CD until then. Go to YouTube. And Do you remember to what you liked on here? Man, Relentless. Uh, I really liked, um, let's see, Relentless Brutality. Re yeah. That's uh, one of my favorite songs. But it, there's no stinkers on there's this. No, yeah, there's yeah. nothing. I mean, the guy's vocals uh, just drop, drop, uh, grindcore <laughs> death metal vocals, growly, growly as hell. Um, yeah. Great. The drumming is like blast beats galore. Um, <laughs> and it's really, it's produced really well. Um, it does. It sounds heavy. I was actually surprised. I, I, I wish they had a bass player. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. <laughs> like, like the guy sounds good playing everything, but there's too many grindcore bands where the guitar player plays all the bass on the records. And I think it's just hard to find <laughs> more than two people who want to play like that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the thing is, as a bass player, I've tried to play with blast beats, and the bass player can't play as fast as the drummer. It doesn't sound right. It's like, what if we both blast out? And it's like, no, that's too... That's you too see? much blast. Yeah, so like... <laughs> that's overblasting. When the drumming is blasting, the bass has to... It usually sounds best if the bass is doing something kind of slow, like... Bong, 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 <laughs> bong, Yeah, yeah. Bong, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh... I know why you lost that CD. Yeah, you lost it. Okay. Uh, there's no bass player. I don't like him. No, I, don't know I do like him. You threw him in the trash can when you found out they didn't have a bass player. On bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, but I think they're great. Depraved murder. And if, yeah. If All you're right. keeping up with Grindcore, that you need that. Now, coming out of Germany, not just Germany, but uh, somewhere else too. Next, one of Germany's neighbors. Anyway, international band. Leper Colony. Leper Colony. Self-titled first, first album. Yep. And the graphics on this are sick. This on uh, Transcending Obscurity. Yeah, those are, that's a really great cover. Good packaging. Look at that. Yeah. It's like a What's foil, that reflective. Yeah. Yeah. And these guys are billed as death metal, but I think it's more thrash metal. It's thrash. It's 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 a lot like you know somewhere. It's a lot like Slayer with a little bit of death. You know, like old school death. Maybe when death was getting into like human or any anyway. Uh, not not human. Not that progressive before that. Like leprosy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, but more th more thrash and uh, oh yeah, they really did it up with the packaging on this. It's and great. this album is is heavy, and uh, I, I dig it. It's it's good old school um, thrash, death thrash, and uh, it's got a lot of good songs on it. That's probably the best cover design art that I've seen. It's ever. really nice. It might be the best I've ever seen. Yeah. It's just I don't know if you can see how it's reflective and then matte for the different images yeah, on it. Yeah, you would know what to call this. Super amazing. Um, but man, these guys are fun, heavy thrash, bordering on death metal. Um, they're new. They've only been around for like a couple of years, and this, this is their the first, first record. This is the first album, yeah. But Mark Grew, uh, who is the singer, was in Morgoth. Oh. Yeah, and Insidious Disease, and Roga Johansson, uh, who plays guitar 
and does bass on here. Well, I guess it, there are three piece. Um, he was in um, Paganizer and Revolting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So these guys are old hands. Yeah, but they sound like, to me, they sound like Massacre. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. What songs did you, look at that. That is so More awesome. Goth. Um, I, uh, I like Thunder and Lightning. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Song. Uh huh. Um, um, what did you like? Surgical Undead Verse. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, it starts off really strong. Perditions and the Human Paradox. Anyway, I can actually read the lyrics on this, so yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and read some lyrics. I was thinking about Surgical Undead Verse. A very uh, uh, you know forty year old and over <laughs> friendly uh, font. Thank you. Thank 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 you, you Leper thank Colony. You. Okay, uh, the the death sets in as the needle pierces skin. New, no rudimentary concoction invades the innards within. A writhing of the bones as something wicked bruise portioned out by the slew in the camps that hold the undead. You, you you were not dead and now you're not alive. Something on the borderline, balancing on a knife. The blade of the persecutor, the one who keeps uh, the alive just barely alive. The, uh, the ex You got it, Tobe, come on, you got this. <laughs> the, the excavator of the virus inside our trembling bodies. Hunting through the night, a flesh ripping night. Tendons, sinew, and veins. Down the steel table reigns. Some of us are willing, some just injected screaming. All of us are dreaming of a future not undead. A bullet through the head of the undead doesn't get us anywhere. Surgery is here to fight the fear. If you have leprosy. <laughs> leper colony. Leper colony. Check them out. They're on I've actually been to a leper colony. Yeah. <laughs> I have. What? Wait, in 1979, I went on a boat down the Amazon. Holy and shit. And we stopped at a leper colony. Oh, my God. And I God. bought these wooden toys that were made. But wow. It was crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh. That's real typical of things they did to entertain me <laughs> Jeez. Wow, that's a, we'll talk about that after the show that's another episode uh, yeah but these guys are on uh, transcending obscurity records um again three piece uh they have a music video for this record called sodom Lost. sodom that's another band yeah that's, i'd like to see them with sodom yeah oh god that would be amazing. leper colony opening for sodom yeah, that'd be rad. That'd be a rad tour. But great, great thrash metal band. This is your debut LP. Pick it up. The Transcending Obscurity Records came out in January, so if you haven't already heard about it, good um, stuff. Now you know from Germany. All right, and from California. Where in California? Uh, these guys are from Ventura, California. Night Demon Outsider. God, I just got hip to these guys. <laughs> Me they too. Are not that new. They've been around since 2011. Tw okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this is their what album? Like? This is their sixth studio album. Uh, came out in March, March 17th on Century Media Records. Okay, my friends who like classic, melodic, hard rock, Ron Williams, I'm looking at you. You're going to want to listen to this. Uh, this guy has got a classic voice uh, to me. You know, I know who he sounds like to me. Well, who does he sound like? On three. One, One, two, two three. Joe Lynn Turner. Oh, okay. Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are some elements of Chris Cornell, but he's also got like that total early 80s AOR kind of, uh, you know, uh, Diamond Head, uh, if you ever listen to Diamond mm -hmm. Head. So he likes the more fuller voiced singers. So, so this Night Demon, the main dude is named Jarvis Leatherby. And he sings and plays bass. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Totally loves that. That's like why he it. didn't lose this CD. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking dope. And uh, it's a concept album with a story uh, about a kid named Johnny who, who uh, lives in a village that's surrounded by this uh, aura. And you can't leave it. And then he goes outside it. And he uh, goes into this alternate reality in the multiverse. <laughs> Damn, I didn't it's know that. It's all here. Wow. And it goes song by song what they're talking about. 
in it. And it's really, it's a good story. Our story of a young grave digger named Johnny working in the family business with his lone relative, his father. The world they inhabit is an insular one. Their small town sees no soul ever enter or leave. A strange green mist lies deep in the woods surrounding the perimeter of the town. It has been said all who attempt passage are never seen again. Holy shit! That's the night demon. Yeah, so night that's a, <laughs> this is now the first song, Outsider. Yeah, it's like he, when he ventures. It's, <laughs> this is such a good album. It's so good. <laughs> it's all so good, man. These guys, it's produced so well, but it's, it's, uh -huh. so gr it's such great rock, man. Heavy rock. Uh -huh. um, you know, like when I when I was like night demon, I just figured this would be death metal. To be honest, like I on couldn't the grave. tell. You know, I thought they were some like European throwback thing. I thought I they were going to be either prog or death metal, yeah, and they uh -huh. were neither. And I was mind blown. Yeah, this is like a classic hard rock thing, and I can see where they go over like gangbusters at like all those European metal. Oh my fests, god! I, you know? Yes, I want to see them at They're a three European. piece. And you know, we missed them. They opened for Satan. Oh my and, god. That was the night that you guys uh, played with. That we uh, played with Fuck Emos. Emos reunion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That uh -huh. was a great show. They did the whole that. tour with Satan. You know that was bad. That show must have been fucking lit. Yeah. Uh huh. So I I found a new term that. Uh, Oh, actually, new wave of British heavy metal. That's, that's what they are. Yeah, new wave of heavy metal. Yeah, new wave of British N -W -O -T -H -M. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, well, that's well, that's Iron Maiden, These guys are Diamond Ventura. Head. Witchfinder, General, yeah. and even Def Leppard was New Wave of British Heavy Metal when mm -hmm. they started. And uh, that that's kind of the jumping off point yeah. for this. Di yeah. Diamond Head especially, because they had that singer the, uh, who who's had that real like radio-friendly voice. Yeah, you yeah. know? This guy kills it, man. He's Jarvis really Leatherby, good. what a singer, yeah. man. What, he could... And what a bass player. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great bass player, too. Actually, I wanted to talk about Beyond the Grave because... His, yeah, his singing and playing that ba the bass in Beyond the Grave is insane, man. Yeah, I don't uh -huh. see how he does it, but uh, yeah, great song, great song. So there's just two other guys, Dusty Squires on drums <laughs> and backing vocals, and Armin John Anthony on guitar, keyboards, backing vocals. Yeah, uh, what's your favorite song? Oh, jeez, it's uh, hard not to love Outsider. But outside like, Obsidian. Yeah, I really like. Uh, yeah, Beyond the Graves, great. I like Escape from Beyond a Escape lot. Escape from Beyond. The Wrath, everything. And then there's this bonus song, The Last Day, that doesn't tie into the plot, but it's just rocks. It sounds just like, you know, um, yeah. a good rocker. You uh, know? Who else did? King Diamond likes to do that. He's got yeah, a, like, yeah. He's got oh, stories. and not a spoiler, but the story kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Oh, you know? hmm. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we'll I, see a seventh album come out next year and maybe we'll get to catch him again with satan yeah oh man do yourself a favor and and uh check out night one. demon yeah. night demon outsider uh, they have one uh no they've got a bunch of videos escape from beyond beyond the grave and outsider mm -hmm. uh listen to videos. outsider first that's yeah. all i'm saying it's if you don't like song. that one then then don't don't bother it it's, is slick hard rock melodic hard rock great to me it sounds radio friendly but my mind's in 1981 yeah you know well that's a good thing when you uh -huh. listen to these guys yeah. here's how it goes outside <laughs> that's all i'm gonna share i could sing the whole song but joel and turner piece. from rainbow is who i was thinking okay, about. okay. Uh, later rainbow i could sing know. more but i don't i don't want us to get sued uh -huh. or taken down um, oh, and we're going to keep it hard rock right here. L.A. Guns, Black Diamonds. Oh, my God. These guys are on such a run. I can't believe it. Their <clears throat> last four albums have been fucking awesome, you know? So, Black Diamonds by L.A. Guns. Oh, man. what What's to say? This is like classic hard rock. You know, um, I'm not a fan of uh, classic uh, L.A. Guns. I never, I don't own any of their albums before the last four. And when I go back and listen to them, it's not that different. But I don't know why. Well, the videos are goofy. I try not to watch videos. You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But it's very 1988, 89, you know. Yeah. 
But, but, uh... The old L.A. Guns videos, I watched a bunch today. Old L.A. Guns videos are the worst. Don't watch them. <laughs> Don't, Don't watch, watch them. You'll mar it'll, it'll make you even hate their new stuff. <laughs> but this album's so good. Yeah. It's like, uh, the only thing I can compare them to is, what well, well, that's going on now is uh, a cheap trick. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Phil Lewis, the singer, who's who's been around the block. Like, he, he was in Girl with... Phil Collins from Def Leppard before he was in, in the early 80s, late 70s. So he goes way back. And his voice sounds awesome. Like, he, he, uh, the only, I mean, him and Robin Zander, you know, I his think. voice is can, still holding out. Yeah, yeah. They still sound uh -huh. 30. Tracy Guns. So Tracy Guns, they, they, there's a long soap opera that goes along with LA Guns that you may or may not have followed. But, <laughs> but, uh, when Tracy Guns uh, and Phil Lewis got back together four albums ago, like eight years ago, and the first album was called The Missing Piece, and that's very good. And the last one was called Checkered Past, and this made my top 20. Uh, and uh, this is just a continuation of that. And it's all, you know what? It's kind of like the run that Motorhead got on in the late mm. in their career, where like any of these songs are fucking interchangeable. Right. Any of these could have been on that, <laughs> right, you know? Right, right. But they're all of a certain standard, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this album I love that. I love it when bands fucking figure it out, dude. They figured it out. They're happy now. All the shit uh -huh. is behind them, and they've got nothing to do but make some great and, records. And I like, uh, you know, I listen to a lot of, or not lately, but I love 70s Aerosmith. And uh, I feel like uh, Kiss and Aerosmith in the 70s, afterwards they lost something where they forgot that they used to sound kind of scary, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Like heavy and scary and when they cleaned up and decided they were only going to sing about sex, you know? And like, elevators. And yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just, they really lost something, you know? Yeah. And But there's some, like, you know, scary... Not, I'm not going to say scary, because, you know, we're just listening to depraved murder. But but tough sounding hard rockers yeah. that, that are still melodic. And uh, I, I really like this album. Uh... Dude, it's so good, what, man. You like it too, huh? Uh, I love You Betray. Uh, yeah. Wrong About You. Yeah. Shattered Glass. Um, I mean, my God, man. Diamonds. The ballad is Diamonds. awesome. Yeah. It's like a perfect <laughs> fucking rock ballad. It's it's just the um, a perfect... The chorus is just amount, a perfect amount of deep and trite at mm -hmm. the same time. When yeah. It's like broken glass can't hold no weight, but broken glass shines like a diamond yeah like, yeah yeah per perfect perfect amount right? yeah yeah it's great uh -huh. what's the first song again you betray yeah you i betray. like wrong about you that's probably my favorite song it's so good man i i think the boys are wrong about you and then he, there's another song where he's about i think it's got got it wrong there's a lot of good songs on here it's about some groupie who like follows them around or something. <laughs> I kind of like it. He's like keeping it real. Yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, this Little is a good list. album. If once again, if you're a hard rock fan, check out LA Guns, Black Diamonds, and I've still never seen these guys live, but I really like their last four. Well, albums. I guess we're gonna have to see them when they come through again. I don't think they're on tour. They were on a package tour. They're with... on a U.S. tour right now, but um, oh, yeah. they're not coming around here. They're as far as uh, far as, they're coming to Oklahoma, but they're not coming to Texas. But um, um, man, the first song, what did it remind you of? What band did it remind you of? Aerosmith. Uh, oh, there's some Led Zeppelin. Yeah, on here. very and they Led don't Zeppelin. Just, it's that Aerosmith thing where like they have like a scary sounding heavy riff with a verse and a chorus, but when they get to the bridge, they're like, "All right, we like the Beatles too. Check this out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that." Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's <laughs> we just can like harmonize. Perfect we can... amount, you know. It's so fun. It's super fun. Yeah, um, uh -huh. I hate to say it, but in a few parts, it remind. There's a few songs. I can't remember which one exactly, but I, I felt like. Uh, I don't like all of Stone Temple Pilots stuff, but I really like Tiny Music. Um, you like that album? Tiny Music is the There's best some album. of their songs that I don't turn off on the radio. Yeah. I've never bought one of their albums. Right. But, but um, I only I, have Tiny Music, to be honest. 
really you have yeah. that one but the first record isn't bad either uh, i don't know i, I really some of their early songs uh, some of them are really unforgivable like plush yeah but they're horrible but yeah. that song big bang baby sounds like red cross that's you a know? Fun, yeah that's a great song and then yeah i like that song sour girl and i even like that corny days of the week song because it sounded like like 70s fun pop rock right. to me you okay know? i think you like it more than me now toby yeah right. I don't, i've I, never I, bought an album <laughs> i'll lend you tiny music but anyway i kind of like interstate love song that's not a bad song i think yeah, just listening uh -huh. to 101x on my drive uh -huh. every morning in the 90s for like five years there's no way i could not like all of these bands after a certain point but but uh uh Anyway, this is a fun record, and this is a totally fun hard rock. I, I hear it a little bit, and there's good music. hard rock. Yeah, 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 I can hear that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and coming uh, on another dinosaur band that's been around even longer, doing their 18th album and still not disappointing. Some ways, just getting better and better, as far as I'm concerned, is Overkill. New record with their scorched. album Scorched. What do you think of this one, Sean? Oh man, you know what? Fast and fun and full of great metal riffage. That's oh what I wrote. Oh my god, fucking Riff City. Get out of here, man. These guys don't quit. And, and, and they've just... Ah, man. They've been... Okay, so... so Mike Dempsey was always trying to turn me on to Overkill. And he, li he likes all the really old stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And I got hip to them in 2012 with Electric Age. And I really, I guess that's like, in the album before that, what's it called, Ironbound? Mm -hmm. That's, I have that, it's really good, but I don't really know the stuff before that too well. But I like the old pros version of uh, Overkill. The, uh, I mean, so the two original guys are the singer and the bass player. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby uh, Blitz and uh, D, whatever. Um, and, uh, the, the, they have two guitar players. Everyone they've got in the band is a hot shot. And they've got the guy, Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall and Drums for the last two albums, three albums. And he just rips. He's the young guy in the band and he's probably 40 something. But, uh, oh my God, the playing, it, the production, the songs, it's so consistent. This is such a good album, and so it's good. a little bit of a progression from what they've been doing. I really, their last album, I believe, was in my top 20, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, these guys don't let up. They're, they're just, uh, I feel like, just hitting their stride, you I know. Lo I love these bands, man, like uh, uh -huh. like Overkill, and I love hearing, like, I, this reminds me of Saxon, you know. Like, guys that have, yeah, like you uh -huh. said, figured out the formula three or four records ago, and are just charging ahead with it and uh -huh. just consistently putting out and yeah. it could be interchangeable but that's fine man because it's like a solid product there's and some more i guess what this album has that seems unique to it from the previous uh overkill albums is more uh showy lead guitar playing okay. i guess which they always had their metal band but i guess the way the first song starts with like a almost like a ace like an Angus Young kind of, uh, what, what? Yeah, what's that? Thunderstruck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Scorched. Uh -huh. yeah, Scorched, yeah. They have a video for Scorched. It's great. Um, what's your favorite song on this record? It's hard to choose, right? I, I really like song number three, The Surgeon. Yeah, I do too. I have that on here. The oh, Surgeon. Oh, really? Yeah. That one's pretty awesome. The Surgeon, Going Home. Going Home. Harder They Fall. Yeah, won't be coming back. Oh, but I gotta say, the song, they've had strong closers on all their albums. And it was either the last one for that had this song, uh, Welcome to the Garden State. They're from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That, like, it's kind of song that, like, you couldn't not hear in their set. You know, <laughs> it's like, and on this album, the last song, Bag of Bones, is like, it's almost like throwback to their 80s style, but y y as soon as you hear it, you're like, okay, this song's totally in the set, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, some songs they rock, but, you know, these guys have 18 albums out, yeah. so, like, how many songs off the new album? You know, they've got fans. They've got fans. It's a 20th record, actually. 20th? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, they've got fans that, like, want to hear, like, some album from the 80s, you know? Like, right. so, anyway, uh... This album's awesome. Scorched. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. It's awesome. It's Overkill's great. still killing it. Yeah. These so guys good. are awesome. So good. Uh, yeah.
Okay. Yeah, video from Sports Talk. And now we're gonna go to one of my all-time favorite bands. Band you guys have never heard of. Yeah, Longhorn Tonight. Tonight, Longhorn, Husker Do. And this is kind of a continuation of this uh, Savage Young Do that came out. So, I don't know, it seems like since Grant Hart died that, um, okay, I'm just gonna jump into the soap opera. Go for it. Because we avoided the whole L.A. Gun soap opera and there's so much to talk about there. Bill Lewis and there's, Tracy there's Guns, you can write a book. There's two versions of L.A. Guns. Their ex-drummer has a version that drops a record every time they drop a record. Yeah, yeah. What are, it's called Regis L.A. Guns now? It's called Riley's Riley's Guns. LA, Riley's Guns. These LA guns. Yeah. Don't don't bother. <laughs> anyway, um, so Husker Do. So Grant Hart passed uh, a few years back, and since then, uh, Bob Mould and uh, Greg Norton have been able to uh, put out some stuff. Man, Greg Norton's band is coming to town. They're gonna play Kick Butt coming up, and I want to see it. And their name is just eluding me right now, but they're playing coming up at Kick Butt. Anyway. Um, I totally want to go to that. So, so, okay, Husker Du, their first album before all this came out was Land Speed Record, which I always found unlistenable. You know, it's super lo-fi, um, and, uh, you, Was it a live recording? It's a live recording, and, From, uh... like, a cassette player at a show or something? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's more lo-fi than Metallic KO. It's more lo-fi, like... It's very intentionally lo-fi, and they're playing everything super fast. And a lot of those songs are on this. I mean, all of those songs are on these two, and on this, which is two, like, live radio recordings. And the crazy thing is, is... I always thought of that as the beginning of Husker Du, but, like, they pretty much had, like, three albums of material before that. I mean, kind of like the Beatles, Husker Du was allowed to, like, stew and create and get in their whatever, probably not as many as the Beatles, like, their, their, their 10,000 hours of playing, like, right. they basically had, like, three albums worth of shit, and they were trying a bunch of different styles, and a lot of this... Could, fits in with what was going on at the time. Right. Uh, it, a lot of it could be on uh, some of the Bloodstains albums, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, those comps are just random bands in the late 70s. What do you think took them so long to get there? Well, they're very young, okay. you know? So when they started, they're all 18. And some of their early songs refer to, like, how young they are. Like the song Husker Do. Like, when it's like, do you remember what it's like to be young? You know? Mm -hmm. is uh, in uh what other song? Uh, yeah, no, there's 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 a uh, can't see you anymore. Yeah, that now that's curious. That one anyway. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, yeah. That song's about a a girl that wants to have sex with one of the is that Grant Hart and mm -hmm. he's not into it anyway uh so you know we're all, we're all learning about ourselves yeah, together we're yeah out our sexuality <laughs> as we get older you know and it can change very young yeah, yeah. uh huh so um there's a lot of good songs a lot of the songs that are on um uh the the early songs that are oh I always hated their first single statues but that song rocks on this it's slow on they 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 play it at uh, the single song but this is like punk yeah rock. they do a good version of statues mm. on here so anyway um this is like really great punk rock and you should check it out um what do you think about it no it's fun it's I mean I I can't say anything more than you've already said it's super fun uh, I think it's more energized a lot of the songs are more energized than there's their studio versions you know so. they're not so artsy like you know you always think of like Husker Du as kind of like mm, more intellectual no, they're punk. Did, you know what yeah, you know what this uh -huh. reminds me of to be honest this reminds me of uh, the resentments in a way, like that that live feel. It's got like a, and I would never the make replacements. That, I mean, I'm sorry, the replacements, oh. like the resentments. They the were fuck? that band. Oh, they had that. Everybody knows that the world is full. Of <laughs> didn't they do the? Uh, <laughs> did they do the Friends theme? The That's the Rembrandts. <laughs> Rembrandts. This reminds me of the Rembrandts. 
This reminds me that it does. It reminds me of the energy of the replacements, uh, which you would never, I would have never considered. Oh, to, like, they put used in to the play same. together. Yeah. Yeah. But uh -huh. still though, like their studio anyway, but it just has that energy, you know, it does. Uh, it's a different energy and it's kind of the sound of Husker do figuring out who they are. But I can tell you what the fucking guitar playing is there. The, the playing is all there already like the guitar solo is ripped the drumming is awesome mm -hmm. like they're kind of just discovering who they are as songwriters what came, you know what, so what studio record came out after all of this like immediately after this the their last show on here Was well this is all of this predates everything falls apart oh okay. right yeah uh yeah and then um there's a uh, the the one was it Metal Circus, Zen Arcade, Metal Circus. Uh, anyway, this predates all of that, but it, it it's actually predates uh, Land Speed Record. But they really sped it up for Land Speed Record, and the songs are a lot more fun than they come off on Land Speed Record. They sound young. I don't know why anyone would buy Land Speed Record at this point <laughs> with uh, with these records out. It's it's got far superior versions of all of those songs, yeah. you know. Yeah. And whatever I was involved, I put out some lo-fi garage rock records in the '90s, but that's it, you can easily be too low fi a little goes a long sure, way sure you know sure, absolutely <clears throat> but anyway this record is awesome if you dig classic punk rock you're gonna want to do yourself a favor check out who's could do tonight longhorn it's awesome all right it'll probably be talked about at the end of the year is like when we do like best reissue right things. best reissues yeah, yeah absolutely um, now d was there so they, they all have different like publishing companies, right? Do you think like the passing of, um, you know, Grant Hart? Grant Hart had something to do with them, like all of a sudden putting out so much material. Uh, yeah, well, that I they've could, been sitting. On? I could act like I mean, I, I, I think a lot about more, you know, the soap opera of this because I've been following this band for so long. Yeah. Um, I don't know what was going on. I read Bob Mould's book. Uh. Uh, but I don't know. It seemed everything seemed to get real easy. I mean, they seem to. I guess you know, it, it's easy to negotiate stuff between two people than it is three people. Yeah. But you know, I don't know if Grant Hart. I mean, I know he didn't have a family of his own that he made. But but you know, sometimes when uh, uh, someone's family takes over the estate, uh, especially in music, they have unrealistic. Like they think that this should be a gold mine, you right. know, and this actually should be a gold mine. But right. but but I don't know what's going yeah. on. But somehow they started all this stuff started coming out. So so between Bob Mould and Greg Norton, they figured out how to do it. It's and, good for us fans, and it's great for the fans. Yeah. And it's your your Husker Du uh, collection is not complete without these. All right. We can't do a song because I took all my power cords to the uh, practice spaces <laughs> because I don't have a car right now because so, I'm around on a scooter. Yeah, uh, we rode scooters today. That was a super. That fun. was totally fun. Yeah, Toby yeah. has these two badass electric scooters we took all over UT campus. And then we rode them around Town Lake and uh, got yelled at by one of the joggers. So we were super pumped. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, but really we'll double up on our songs next week. Uh, yeah, we'll gonna... play two songs. And we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, what do we have? This the Loose and Forest. Uh, <laughs> April March. Yes, the new April March <laughs> record. Uh, Mariah Woo! and, uh, oh. Uh, Drain. Drain and Jesus Peace. Yeah. And uh, Sanguasawa Bog. <laughs> And, God bless you. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, we're going to talk about the Black Mariah yeah, next time. Or uh, Enforced. Enforced. We're still here. The Hers Collection. We need to get to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and yeah, all that. <laughs> all right. So, so, thanks for joining us again. Sorry we don't have a song for you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys.